it's amazing to see how much mental clarity and space that I've been able to have since mm -hmm. I've um, left my employer. So, um, how does that feel, man? I, <laughs> listen, I will say it was so funny the other day last week. I stopped and I was like, I feel like I'm busier now than I was when I was really? working. Really? Yeah, just I mean, I, I'm I'm trying to stay disciplined. Yeah, and you know because now my bread and butter is on me. You yeah. know what I mean? My, it's, people sometimes want to leave the employer, you know, or leave their job and things like that. But they'll have they'll have a plan, or they're not working the plan. And at the end of the day, it's like you don't work, you don't eat. So, so what do you what do you feel about that? Because like in this day of social media and just being a boss, um, it looks very attractable. So for you, just most recently, you decided you decided to say that you know I'm really going to follow the vision that I have with diverse dining, and I'm just gonna go full fledged. Well, I will say for me, you know, I'm one of the people that I gotta know that I know that I know. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that God is is leading me um, or letting me know that it's it's time to do something I, i'm i'm older now mm -hmm. uh, and i made enough mistakes just trying to do my own thing so for me it's, it's so funny at some other point i'll be able to tell the full testimony but um god have i've been feeling god have been telling me i need to leave my job for i didn't feel like my plan was solid enough and uh, i was a little nervous about it so right. i kept pushing the date back and this very last time um i remember just hearing like you again like you need to leave um, and, and, and the climate in my job has started to change a little bit. And, um, uh, so I said, okay, God, and I said, I'm going to have to give myself a date, um, and say it out loud or else I'm probably not going to keep, you know, the date. And so it was so funny because I had, I had started to, um, I started to verbalize the date to mm. people. People were saying, you leave me, you know, you still work full time. I'm like, so yes. like you were like putting in the atmosphere, like, oh, okay, absolutely. let me do that. Absolutely. And you kind of did it for yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. I had to, I had to verbalize it, but let me, let me tell you what happened. Cause you get the inside <laughs> scoop, girl. This, this is the inside edition. So, um, so I literally was like, I'm going to start to set a date. I'm going to start mm -hmm. saying a date because if I don't give myself a deadline, I'm never going to do it because right. it's never going to be the right time, right? Um, and so June 28th was my year anniversary for Diverse Dining. It was a, a year in business. So I said, that would be a good date. It was a Friday. I said, that's going to be my date. And so like um, about a month and a half before, like I, I, this, I had decided this about four months before because I had kept pushing the date back. Mm -hmm. Um, and so about two, about a month and a half before I started to tell people, I ran into them and I would be like, I'm leaving my job. They were like, you still work full time? I'm like, yeah, but I'm leaving June 28th. Mm -hmm. And the closer it get, of course, I'm like, but how though? <laughs> right. <laughs> but where? Yeah. <laughs> so you had that faith talk. It was beyond. It yeah. was, it was so much a faith talk. And what I was going to say is that, um, about, about a month before I, the June 28th, my, I ended up finding out my position was going to end up being eliminated. Really? Um, and the funny thing so was... So that was I, like an extra push, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Like, when okay. I sat down in the meeting to have the conversation about the, about the position being eliminated, because I was the only one in the program, um, and so we provide professional development to schools, um, and they told me the date was June 28th. They said, uh, we're going to do it June 28th, and then my job said, we're going to let you stay until the 1st, so you can get another month of insurance. Um... They, so what did you think? Do, do you think that was just divine? Do you think that was? Oh, I God? absolutely know that. Because isn't that I, absolutely ironic? Beyond, you know? the, I mean, I know, I, I know beyond a fact the exact that day. it was divine, it, wow. and it was exactly what I needed to have the confidence that yeah. I was doing the right thing at the right time. Mm -hmm. um, had I not got that, I probably would have kept pushing the day back. Like I'm gonna do it just June, July mm -hmm. 28th or August 28th. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> right. But I mean, um, so many steps of uh, so many um, confirmations followed that I ended up getting some office space for free. Um, just so much favor. I can't yeah. even go into it. Um, so I, I absolutely know that it was God, um, but I definitely had I, I had to get an extra confirmation, mm -hmm. um, and that was it. So, so you're a woman of faith, right? Um, and you know, we we know that we hear that we see that. Um, how has that your faith walk helped you with um, just establishing diverse dining? And now that you are, you know, full fledged, just employed by yourself, how has that helped you? And then like just moving forward like how do you use that to continue to fuel you well mm -hmm. um my faith walk is is the whole it's it it's the whole business yeah. i mean i i mean from for the aspect of you know t 
to do a bit to start a business in this uh, current eco and co economy um, and current climate mm -hmm. um, is to say we're gonna bring people together is risky we yeah. seeing people um, coming up on the news missing right um, and you seeing people not together right you seeing people you know? not so, together so like you're doing something to say come on together yeah. and then people are yeah. not together yeah. and then you yeah. got people who on your side who think that ain't a great idea you got people on the other side who think that's not a great idea right. so it's it, it's very much something where it's like you got to know that you're doing um what you're supposed to do yeah. um, how do you how do you balance though the two parties of not a, a great idea great idea and then you're right here like what makes you say this is the idea mm -hmm. well i i think it's for me it's my life mm -hmm. it's you know i have diverse relationships i have i, I would say before i've said it before that you know it'd be very easy for me to hate all white people mm -hmm. if i didn't love white people mm -hmm. like i if i didn't love some white people like i have friendships um you know relationships that are solid um in my life and so it makes when when i'm challenged like we all are like anybody will be mm -hmm. um african-american you know will be challenged with, due to the history of what's happening in this country to hate a certain group of people or to not like a certain group of people but when i'm challenged i always am able to lean back on the relationships that i have established yeah. the friendships and i and I, my relationships are real they're not surface so i can have certain conversations with my white friends about my frustrations about my hurts about my irritation about things that i don't feel is is okay um and and it, I, it goes like any other relationship it's not and it's and it's so like it's possible you know what i find in communicating with people um sometimes that either they don't want to make it possible or they just feel like it's impossible so mm -hmm. it goes back to those two like not impossible mm -hmm. or you know they're not trying to make mm -hmm. it possible and then you have you who, uh, you know established a brand diverse dying and saying it is very possible and this is my life story I know it's possible yeah, and this is this is what it does absolutely yeah and I, and I think that you know it's so funny because you know we we definitely have a heavy focus on um, cultural differences but we deal with all issues around diversity diversity mm -hmm. is not just you know black and white diversity is age diversity yeah. is you know what I mean? It's it's economic background. It's um, you know it, it could be anything. It could be your clique at church. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Or your clique at school. Mm -hmm. And and so we, you know, our mission really is to to give people the courage to cross those barriers, whatever box that they've allowed themselves to be put in. You know, whatever place that they found themselves stuck in, to use the power of relationships with people who maybe have overcome those things or who see things a little bit differently to um, to help them get past those places. Mm -hmm. So it's very intentional, not so much, you know, in, in just black and white relationships, although that's huge and right. probably the most needed area right now. Yeah. It's any area. But you, yeah, you, so you add all the other elements of part of life, ageism, mm -hmm. you know, all of those mm -hmm. that you add. Uh, speaking of ages, um, who are some women in your life who have helped you to navigate these diverse, you know, situations? So I'm I'm nervous to start calling some people out because I know I'm gonna forget <laughs> people because there there has been a lot. Yeah. Um. And I think for for every stage there's been um, some women. I think for me, um, my grandmother was very foundational early on. Um, I watched how my grandmother lived her life, mm -hmm. and um, I my grandmother was very good at making allow making sure people can stay together okay you know you didn't I didn't learn until I was older about the different issues the different family members had because regardless of what was going on mm -hmm. we were going to my grandma mom's house on Sunday you know so people figured out a way to figure it out and yeah. to push past it and still share space with each other so like um, you, you're saying unity exactly. right there yeah exactly mm -hmm. um, so I would say she was definitely uh, instrumental fundamental um, my mom I get my entrepreneurship spirit from she's just used to work with people for as long as I can remember um, so that you know I credit to her um, but throughout life uh, so many women just just took me on under their wings I, I know you know when I've been in church you know I've had women who you know I call my spiritual mothers who you know have poured into me who call me who check on me um, and, and at church I mean at, at my job that I just left I always try to identify a mentor um, you know, Wanda Montgomery was uh, was a mentor for me a, a while. A, a, not, well, still is, but was while I was at Children's. Um, and how important? So, how important do you think mentorship is? 
Oh, I um, think. Especially with, you know, these relationships with the women you had. I'm pretty sure they're all different ages, you know, so. and But they're still mentoring you in some type of capacity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think mentorship is, is, is foundational mm-hmm. for anything. I think, you know, just passing of a torch or passing of the mantle is just... Um, or sharing of the mantle, however you want to look at it, it's just, it's just fundamental. You just need somebody to kind of let you know that you can get to the other side. Right. Um, I think sometimes when you're going through whatever you're going through, we, you know, we all get challenged to want to give up. You know, we all get challenged to to um, you know to want to be angry and and want to fight. And so you know, you need somebody that's like, hey, right. it is a light over here. Yeah. You just keep coming. Yeah. You know, or here's some water so you can yeah. you know have a little bit more stamina for your journey so I think mentorship is 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 so important and honestly if if there was one thing that I could say you know uh, the city of Milwaukee needs more of or or just the world period it would be mentorship I think that we have to you know and 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 I also accredit success I think that you're successful based on how many people you have up under you that are able to do and 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 able to live at a certain level of grace and freedom mm. um because of what you have established for them i am that's how i when i look at people i'm like i i admire you or i think that you're successful so that's how you define success absolutely okay absolutely yeah, yeah. I, I like that mm. I, I i i could agree to that mm. i like that uh, so shifting into um your full-time role with diverse dining what does that look like i got a lot of um ideas and um plans Uh for uh just just the expansion of the idea i can really set my attention and be a lot more intentional Mm -hmm. um i haven't been able to make a lot of collaborations um and just spend a lot of time to be very intentional because i was working full time Mm -hmm. and raising a family with the rest of the time but now i have time to really sit and say you know where are there some divides where you know who are some people that i can bring together what way can i bring them together um, and planning that and being intentional about that. Also, um, putting a, a bigger focus on education because we know that that's a, the, one of the biggest areas where we always see a lot of division and divide and healthcare um, as well as economics as a whole, you know. So really being able to concentrate, figuring out how I can um, come up with some more creative topics around those areas and, um, you know, address that. Uh, I also am, you know, able to do what I, what I did for my job full-time for diverse dining by providing training opportunities for, for corporations and, and different companies um, and just giving them a unique way to for them themselves to have experience. And, and you're doing this in one of the most segregated cities. <laughs> we Googled it in the America. other day. It said it, it, was said it is the most the, segregated. It is the most segregated <laughs> yeah. city in America. Milwaukee, which is your home. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, yes. and so... Do you feel like that's an extra, like, we got to, you know, it, there's no way that I cannot mm-hmm. do what I'm doing because of where I come from and what I've seen mm-hmm. and, um, you know, the barriers that we have and the relationships that we don't have because of the barriers that we have? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. For a long, for a long time, um, I was just like probably a lot of other people in Milwaukee where I was just like, I'm going to move. Mm-hmm. You know, I can move, I can move. Where were you going? Girl. <laughs> um, my fav- One of my favorite places was North Carolina for a long period of time. You know, I never visited there. Um, so I, I just liked the culture that yeah. I experienced when I would go there. And I liked the, the temperature pretty much Of course, round. the temperature. <laughs> um, so that was one of the places on my list mm-hmm. uh, of where I would possibly move. I love Hawaii, but I was like, I got to like pack everybody up and take them with me. <laughs> right. And, you know, because I want to be on an island by myself. Right, right. Um, and I, I like Virginia. I like the um, I like the East Coast a lot. I love um, the East Coast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, so, and I have some friends that are in Philly and um, in the D.C. area. So that's that's another place that would definitely be um, on the bucket list. Mm-hmm. So um, when I was thinking about moving, that's what I thought about. Um, but I, but because I, I have children and stuff like that now, you know, I have my, my, my nieces and my nephew, um, it, I really was compelled to say, you can't just leave. You got to do something about it. You got to help them to change or to have a different experience while they're here because, you know, I'm, I'm in some ways, you know, I'm, I'm not in some ways, but I'm responsible for them. So, 
you know, I gotta empower them while they're in this space. Mm. So you're empowering them, and then you're empowering the community. You, you're just doing it. Girl. <laughs> you, <laughs> That's right. You're just doing it. And so these experiences, they are educational. They are, um, you know, you get knowledge. Um, you get, you know, connected. Talk, tell us about um, the fun part of it. What does it look like? Well, the well, the whole thing is, I think we, we trick everybody with the education and all the stuff yeah. that you name through fun. Uh-huh. I mean, the whole preface of it is to, you know, let people have opportunity to connect in an authentic way. Mm-hmm. So, um, so um, we do, you know, I create custom icebreakers, I create custom games, um, and then we, we um, have a, you know, conversation so that... Um, it's, it's just done in a way that it is fun. It's, it's promoting, you know, us being able to have fun and connect. Okay. So I, I sneak the education into the icebreakers, into the games and activities okay. so that... So it's like aren't... school. You kind of like sneak that in, but then, you you know, they still get the, the lesson, the good stuff from me. Right. Yeah. Right. The whole idea and goal, like I said, is... Um, and I don't know if I did say, but I said it in my head. Uh, <laughs> but it's to get people to get comfortable interacting with people that are different from them, building some kind of connection, and then obviously coming back mm-hmm. and and having more opportunities to connect with those people. Um, I'm grown. I'm adult, and you know I think I, I'd like to believe that people mean well or people have good intentions. But the reality is, with my life schedule, I don't have time to, you know, make a hobby out of building a relationship if, it, if that opportunity is not some way connected to something that I'm already doing it's very difficult for me to do that because I have commitments that keep me busy mm-hmm. so the idea for diverse dining was you know most people are gonna go out to eat probably at least once a month most people like certain different you know they're trying different types of food um, so instead of you doing that however you do it come to this space that's different and that's intentionally diverse and do it in that setting bring your girlfriends bring bring yourself and connect with some people that you typically wouldn't connect with understanding that most people probably are going to venture out and just make it a you know project to do that on their own and if they do there's a lot of fear and uncomfortableness that's associated with that because of like i said the the current climate um that we live in and so um the goal was to make it easy for people to do that and make it easy for them to get maybe some personal questions answered you know a lot of times we have biases that we will never say out loud. Yeah. But if I'm around somebody um, and I and I realize, okay, I thought, you know what I'm saying? I thought all people who wore pink were stuck up. Right. But I'm hanging out with you and you super cool. Like, mm-hmm. okay, so I'm dealing with my bias through this relationship. Yeah. And, the, like, those are the things that you guys discuss at the table. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. So what do you see in the future with Diverse Dining? Are you uh, are you interested in expanding beyond your home base? Absolutely, girl. Um, I, we will be having a facilitator's training um, very soon before the end of uh, 2019, um, as well as um, expanding the opportunities not just to the restaurants but to homes, so people can facilitate these conversations more often in more places. Um, very early on, I have people from some other states that reached out to me about doing some things there. I definitely will be exploring some stuff locally like Green Bay, Madison, um, but uh, ultimately, you know, as I'm positioned to be able to go across the nation. Yeah. Um, wherever the, say the, it again. To go across the nation. Yes. <laughs> wherever the door, you <laughs> right. know, like they say, if they, if they welcome you into the house, you come, you you come, come. on in.